fart in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. Hey, Ask Reddit, what's the best insult that you've ever heard? Robbie Cake says, A teacher of mine once said to a classmate who kept making the most asinine contributions to the conversation, You make it really difficult to underestimate you. The guy had no idea what it meant. He thought it was a compliment. <laughs> I feel bad for that kid. He's probably doing his best. <laughs> but then again, he doesn't know he got insulted. In the same thread, after football practice in high school, I was walking to the locker room, and the coach said to me, Hey, Smith, got any plans for the rest of the day? And I said, I'm heading out with some of the guys on the team. Uh, we're gonna go try and meet some girls. His reply was, Smith, you couldn't get laid in a cat house on dollar day with a fist full of $100 bills. That stopped me right in my tracks. Again, dude, just mean teachers. Why <laughs> why you gotta shut down the kid's confidence like that? This was in 1980. I can't imagine what would happen if a coach said that to a kid today. As we've learned, well, you can't really do anything. <laughs> There's a teacher shortage. He's probably got tenure. You'll just have to grin and bear it. Claire Bear says, I was playing Pavlov, a VR game, with a group of people, one of which was this really annoying kid who kept saying something like, Tch, you're bad because you're adopted, and things like that. He said that to one dude, and the dude replies something like, well, I'd return the insult, but that would imply that someone actually wanted you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, had the whole lobby erupting. I don't know if that's taken from somewhere or what. See, now this was deserved. This is the kind of thing that I love to see. Being a kid on the internet don't give you carte blanche to do, like, well, basically anything at all. <laughs> uh, seen and not heard, that's what I say. Well, why, back in my day... <laughs> Hope Deferred said, uh, when I was in high school, one of my classmates gave our teacher a typical your mom response to a question without realizing that the teacher's mother had just died. Oof. Without missing a beat, the teacher said, you know what? Leave my mother out of this. I don't make fun of your parents and look what they produced. <laughs> uh, feels good, man. Again, snot-nosed little brat kids getting shut down. That's the most beautiful thing in the world. That probably became a formative memory. He still lays awake in bed and thinks about that. Still hasn't come up with a retort for it either. <laughs> Good on the teacher for this one. Sounds like she had that one in the chamber for a while. Always and forever. I don't have a mom. Me and my dad share yours. <laughs> God, dude. Uh, this is just some, some savagery. And I love it, honestly. Cold Calc says, this one probably is very common. We'd say it all the time as teenagers. Hey, you leave my mother out of this and I'll leave this gestures to your own junk out of your mother. I'd be like, go ahead, dude, shoot your shot. You're probably, you're probably gonna get lucky. She's got a thing for fat idiots. <laughs> <laughs> the Roaming Weeb says, context aside, someone once told me that I look like I go to the park to punch birds. Bro, bird puncher. We gotta get the cake puncher series up on the channel, right? Okay, Age gets it. He's like, yeah, sometimes you just gotta friggin' spark out a goose just to show the rest who's boss. Geese are probably the only birds that really do deserve punching, right? Most of them just mind their own business. I mean, they poop on my car sometimes. <laughs> uh, Theromented says, 16 year old me trying to convince my dad to take my friends and I to see American Pie. Oh, that movie that everybody saw but nobody talks about. <laughs> dad says, so what is it about? OP says, it's about a group of high school friends trying to lose their V cards. Dad says, I can stay home and see that. <laughs> Oh, you got got real good. That dad, <laughs> this is the kind of dad we all aspire to have, isn't it? Fire Goddess agrees, your dad is awesome. <laughs> uh, somebody else hops in and says, this reminded me of the time that I asked my cousin if he watched the TV show Desperate Housewives, and he said, no, I married the one. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't let his wife hear that, all right? I remember when Titanic came out. My grandma, my mom, and I were all getting ready to go see it. My grandpa said, I don't know what all the fuss is about. I can tell you what happens. The boat sinks. The end. Lol. Maybe it was his delivery, but it cracked me up. How dare you, grandpa? It's the greatest love story ever told. Random Vegas posts? Yeah, username checks out. He said, uh, I was at the pool in Vegas wearing a straw cowboy hat with my shirt open. And one of my friends said, damn. How could you not get laid with that outfit today? And the other friend said, Don't worry, he's gonna show us. <laughs> uh, sometimes you just try it a little too hard. At least one of your friends was there to gas you up. Doug Lowry replies, uh, A co-worker once said, It's good enough for the girls that I go out with. And I blurted out, Yeah, but I've seen the girls you go out with. So am I to presume that those girls are ugly? It lacks a little bit of context. It doesn't punch as hard as it should, Doug. I gotta be real honest with you. Uh, Rhino5150 says, Some guy on Reddit said he fornicated with OP's mom. OP replies, I'm happy to know that I'm no longer her biggest disappointment. <laughs> I haven't heard any insult that epic before or since. Wow, epic, bro. We walked straight out of 2005. Why don't we put some bacon on it, bro? <laughs> Take it all the way back to the 90s. It's an extreme insult. Whoa. Party demon, whoa. I don't mean to get hung up on the epic thing. <laughs> I do like the insult. I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, Scott Cree says, I bet your parents change the subject when their friends ask about you. Mine definitely do. They're like, oh, what's your oldest up to? Uh, he tells fart jokes on YouTube mostly. <laughs> He's got a beautiful wife, lovely kids, and somehow he decides that this is what he wants to do with his life. <laughs> oh well, different strokes, you know? Uh, Hind Maja says, I was out with some workmates on a Christmas night out. One guy I work with was drunk and really obnoxious with it. He said to the barmaid, Fancy sitting on my face. Quick as a flash, she replied, Why? Is your nose bigger than your dong? <laughs> uh, oh, that's too good. You know she's pulled that one out before. The entire place erupted in laughter and he skulked off. That was over 20 years ago and it still gives me a chuckle. <laughs> it's too good. The perfect setup, the perfect punchline. What else do you want from me? Year of the Squirrel says, I was talking with a female friend at a concert who was getting unwanted attention from a drunk guy. He pulled his junk out and flashed her. She looked and said, eh, no thanks, I don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> the bloke walked off with a sad look on his face. I, on the other hand, was doubled over. God, where do people get stuff like this? Was that spur of the moment? <laughs> Has this happened to her before? I got a lot of questions. Scientist Suitable says, This reminds me of one that my uncle told me. Had a rather wild friend with an admittedly decent dong, and while drunk at parties, he'd almost always flop it out when trying to impress someone. He tried chatting up a nurse one day, flopped it out, and she looked at it and went, eh, I seen bigger, <laughs> and went back to her drink, completely uncaring about it. Absolutely deflated his ego. I mean, I guess it's somewhat of a burn. It's nowhere near the best insult. I guess that's always the, the secret unwritten rule of Reddit. Once you get three posts in, it's, not, it's no longer funny anymore. Once you get five posts in, everything's devolved. You can't even read what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> your brain falls out of your ears. The pieces are moving, said. Somebody once insulted somebody else by saying that they'd need a recipe for making ice cubes. I mean, it is pretty hard. First, make sure the fridge is plugged in. <laughs> I'm full of helpful hints. Trick Reveal says, well, you're not the dumbest person I ever met, but you better hope that that guy doesn't die. <laughs> uh... And then the best response to that insult is, well... I will pray for your health. <laughs> uh, because obviously you've met you before. I don't want to take the crown, you know? It, it seems like the only thing you really got going for you, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I love this thread. 
Preferably outside, says bunch of quite pretentious people getting out of a limo at a club and pretending they're more important than they are to get ahead in the line. And the bouncer quips, can always tell clowns all arriving in the same car. <laughs> <laughs> they really thought the limo gave them like some special privileges. If you're the only one stepping out of a limo, I'm impressed. If you're stepping out with 15 other people, I'm like, oh look, high school prom let out early. <laughs> you guys all pitched in a tenor for that? That's real nice. Squeaky Lobster says, yeah, some bouncers are brilliantly witty. I assume it comes from working in a job where you gotta deal with drunk a-holes all the time. A few years ago, I got ID'd to enter a bar. I'd recently started buzzing my hair due to hair loss, yet my photo driving license had me with a thick, full head of hair from a few years before. The bouncer looked at the card, then at me, then he says, Have you forgotten something? I'm confused. He then shows his colleague who nods and says, Yeah, mate. You definitely forgot something. <laughs> and then he points to his head. Bro, you don't gotta do that. Burn me while I'm in line to get in. I'm trying to get in there to drink to forget about my hair loss, all right? Just bad business, but OP seemed cool about it, I guess. Uh, Green Buggy adds on, years ago, I was working the door slash security at a job that I worked at that was having a private local sorority slash fraternity Halloween party. And I like booze, and I know the courtesy that you should show the door guys when you sneak booze into a venue, and that is, of course, if you aren't feeling like an arrogant frat douche. So some guy dressed as a giant pumpkin had a whole liter bottle of Smirnoff that he pulled out of his costume right in front of me and another employee. And when I told him to toss it, he tried to argue with me that he totally didn't have any booze on him. After some back and forth, I told him that if he didn't toss it, I was going to toss him out. So he pivoted from I don't have any booze to do I look like a liar to you? No, sir. You look like a pumpkin. Now toss the booze or you're getting tossed out of the venue. He couldn't even take himself seriously after that. LOL. Yeah, uh, mm. like I said, third post, it always kind of goes off the rails. People are like, I got a cool story to add in. It's like, nah, dude. <laughs> uh, I appreciate the effort, but I, I don't think it's as good as the first couple of stories. But Green Buggy does try for a, a bit of redemption with an addition. At the same party, a douchey frat bro dressed as Elmer Fudd did the most Fudd thing possible and drunkenly dropped a bunch of live 12-gauge shells on the floor. Got a bunch of free ammo that night, too. You walking around picking up 12-gauge shells off the floor? Don't you have a job to do? <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess I wouldn't say no to free ammo, but let's, let's focus on the mission at hand. Please, just a little bit. Mike E. McGee says, you got a face for radio and a voice for writing. Both of those things are true. I take slight offense. <laughs> uh, Lissa, master of coins, says from Golden Girls. Blanche, now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to take a long, hot, steamy bath with just enough water to cover my perky bosoms. Sophia, so you're only going to sit in an inch of water? <laughs> Uh, I swear, sitcom writing has, like, some of the best insults. I watched Married with Children up until about, uh, season five, and then I got bored. But there are just the, the sickest burns, because you can write in the perfect setup. And as far as sitcoms go, Golden Girls is, is one of the best. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> Golden Girls has so many. Yes, Blanche. So tell me, Rose, be honest. What was your first impression of me? Rose, well, I thought you wore too much makeup and were a slut, but I was wrong. You don't wear too much makeup. <laughs> oh my god, they're so catty and so old. When young women do it, they're, they're just being bitches. When old women do it, that's hilarious. That has the makings of great comedy. <laughs> Dorothy says, now remember, Ma, don't do anything I wouldn't do. And Sophia says, well, I think I crossed that line when I got the date. <laughs> uh, oh, maybe that's a show that I need to go back and watch. I've never watched it like sequentially or anything. But this thread, yeah, this thread talked me into it. 
Last one, Dorothy said, he has the personality of a dial tone. <laughs> I've met guys like that. They're just like, duh, duh. <laughs> uh, uh, my dad tells a story of when he had an argument with an ex and she asked him, well, farm boy, what's it like banging a pig? And he responded, I've had better, but you seem to enjoy it. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, that is just completely unnecessary. Or is it? I guess she's an ex for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> It's like that, that clip from Liar Liar, where he's like, I've had better. I've had better? Flap Scrap says, In college, I bluffed my way into a construction job. One day, the foreman walked by and said, I hope you don't f the way you swing that hammer, boy. <laughs> uh, uh, no rhythm? Is that what we're getting at? Angled off to the left a little bit, leaving some bent nails? Then you'd be like, I don't know what to tell you, Foreman. It curves to the left. Uh, I'm just playing the hand that I was dealt. <laughs> uh, L9 Fingers says, my favorite of all time was from r slash roast me. Guy was wearing a checkered shirt. And the line was, hey, thanks for wearing graph paper so we can calculate the exact waste of space. <laughs> God. Uh, he wanted to be roasted, not incinerated. Why are you doing this? <laughs> it kills me every time I think about it. It is perfectly, honestly. I'm gonna keep this one in my back pocket for when hipster flannels make a comeback. <laughs> Aetherus Prime says, there was this post on Roast Me on the top of all time and the roasty legitimately looked very odd. All right, let's, let's check out this guy real quick. Oh yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> and the top comment was, Bro, what happened? <laughs> uh, I nearly shat my pants laughing. I mean, some people play the genetic lottery and they lose real hard, you know? <laughs> that post was super savage. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. <laughs> uh, Dante B. Merkley says a colleague of mine was told the following by a waitress when he tried to hit on her. You have more d in your personality than you do in your pants. It's not bad, it's not bad, except then the inevitable retort is like, I can prove it to you, something like that. I think you just have to huff and walk away. Best insult seems like something that should shut down absolutely everything else, but you know, a for effort, that's what I'll say. <laughs> the Traveler says, it's because of people like you that they still print instructions on shampoo bottles. Love that. What am I, the FDA? <laughs> you realize they're the ones that make them do that, right? Now I've just deconstructed this joke until it's no longer funny. Thank you so much, I'll be here all week. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Fatchin12 says, Toby's in HR, which technically means that he works for corporate, so he's not really part of our family. Also, he's divorced, so he's not really a part of his family. <laughs> uh, I, I think this is lifted from the office, uh, but there are some decent roasts in the office as well, I guess. KingGuy420 says, You eat corn the long way. <laughs> I don't know why, but this is the only one to make me laugh. It's not the only one to make me laugh, but it, it's so absurd that... <laughs> it really is rather endearing, isn't it? You eat corn the long way. Whoever you say that to, they're gonna scramble to ever come up with a retort. <laughs> I'll be thinking of that one years later. Not Aid 50 says, when I was 16, I accidentally cut a woman off and she screamed out her car window at me. Who did you bang to get your license? I laughed so hard. It really stuck with me. I'm not hearing an outright denial, OP, which, which is a little bit concerning. I'm gonna say that. <laughs> I don't often have road rage, but when I do, I generally call people princess. No curse words involved. You're just like, hey, nice turn, princess. What are you doing, princess? 
whether they're a guy or a girl, they generally get pretty insulted. It's not a best insult, but I like it. <laughs> Board BSEE says, best one I heard recently was someone who commented on a shirtless picture of a guy and called him Tragic Mike. <laughs> Uh, he wanted to be just like Mike, but he fell really short. <laughs> uh, Commissioner of Lunacy, best I ever heard was, you look like somebody set you on fire and put you out with a chain. That philanthropist's name, Ghost Rider. <laughs> uh, uh, that's something similar to what I heard on South Park. Your face looks like someone tried to put out a forest fire with a screwdriver. I don't know, both of those feel like they're just trying way too hard to be clever. Sometimes it is more effective to just be like, you are an ugly human being. Who did you make angry? What gypsy cursed you to a life of such ugly uglitude? <laughs> uh, uh, bro Nizzle says, your mom is so slow, it took her nine months to come up with a joke. <laughs> Ah. Oh, that is, that is ambrosia. Mmm. Definitely storing that one in my pocket for later. Hollow Cap follows up. Your papa's so smart, he made that joke in 10 seconds. <laughs> uh, not the parents, man. Leave them out of this. Both of these just gold. Why is this so far down in the comments? I love it. <laughs> Uh, aggressive ex-boyfriend said, How's it feel banging my sloppy seconds? And my friend said, Well, it's brand new after like the first inch. <laughs> uh, oh, there's no returning from this. You have been destroyed thoroughly. It's time to pack it in, son. TKO0810 says, He's aggressively taking notes in order to sound witty and original next time I'm in an argument. Bro, I'm doing the same thing. No shame. <laughs> I think a really good insult is meant to be passed around, right? Like your mom! <laughs> Got him! <laughs> uh, Bastet says, I do that too. And I now have several in circulation. Like, I envy people who have never met you. <laughs> You have the social skills of a wasp at the picnic. Like white Anglo-Saxon Protestant? <laughs> I resemble that remark. <laughs> I don't have the time or the crayons to explain this to you. <laughs> you don't look like an idiot, yet here you are, opening your mouth and proving me wrong. That's like sort of a spinoff of that Mark Twain quote, isn't it? Uh, you're so dense that it's a wonder you haven't collapsed into a black hole. I've said something similar to that before, too. I'm quite partial to I don't have the time or the crayons to explain this to you. Especially if they're in the Marine Corps. <laughs> Bunch of crayon eaters. But it is confirmed that the red ones taste the best. I'm pretty sure. Username Re. <laughs> That's just perfect. <laughs> he says, you are just spare parts, aren't you? Well, let's hope someday somebody puts him to good use. Fanaraz says, My friend uploaded a photo of one of our Navy serving co-workers with the caption, Burn me. And the most popular remark was, Your mother only wants a folded flag for Christmas. Oh, God. That is... <laughs> that is dark. Jeez, uh, they said burn, not nuke from space. I I'll be real honest with you, dude. That cuts me deep. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need to go that far. A burn, it is more than a roast. I'll give you that. But we have ascended all the way to complete incineration in like half a second. Wind it back, bro. <laughs> Let's be cool on the internet for a second. Come on. Flashpoint J27 has a few. He says, you would struggle to pour water out of a boot with the instructions printed on the heel. It's kind of like the ice cube thing. It's water-based, at least. <laughs> You've got two brain cells, and they're both fighting for third place. <laughs> uh, I love that. We often say that in the Discord. We only got the one brain cell, but we pass it around pretty good. Like your mom! <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, goddammit. 
Somewhere out there is a tree, tirelessly producing oxygen for you to breathe. You should go and apologize to it. <laughs> uh, at my funeral, I want my coworkers to be my pallbearers and lower my casket into my grave so they can all let me down one last time. Oh, it's not even really a burn. Kind of kamikaze because in this in this hypothetical, you're already dead. So they won no matter what. And my personal favorite from an episode of Frasier. Ooh, that's a big brain sitcom. <laughs> Roger, at Cornell University, they have an incredible piece of scientific equipment known as the Tuttling Electron Microscope. Now, this microscope is so powerful that by firing electrons, you can actually see images of the atom, the infinitesimally minute building blocks of our universe. Roger, if I were using that microscope right now, I still wouldn't be able to locate my interest in your problem. Thank you for your call, Jesus. Frasier was just Big Bang Theory before the Big Bang Theory, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, oof. Alright, our last one is from The Bitter Bear. I was working backstage on the show. They put unlubed rubbers over the wireless mic packs to keep them from getting wet with sweat. Big brain time. The sound assistant was pretty much brand new and was struggling to get one of the packs covered. Of course, one of the other hands can't help himself and says, Clearly you've never put one on before. Without missing a beat, the new guy fired back, Nah, your mom always puts them on for me. <laughs> uh, I'm not one to find mom jokes all that original, but that one got me. It's still been years, and I still chuckle about that from time to time. I mean, that that is a really great... There's no coming back from that. New guy earned some respect that day. I hope that you guys will drop your best insults in the comments. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, do all those things if you haven't already. Maybe share the video around. It's a pretty good one-off to get people interested in the Red X vibes. Follow me on the social medias. We still working on that TikTok. There's a Discord, I mentioned that. There's a Twitter, I'm there sometimes. Basically, whatever you want, I'll probably be there. I'd also like to thank my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous Patreon patrons and YouTube channel members for helping me to stay afloat. I really do appreciate the heck out of you guys. I would never insult you, I swear. I'll sing for you. That's coming tomorrow. Look forward to it. As always, keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands, you know. And of course, always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it. And I shall see you in the next one. So until then, friends... Uh, bye bye.